Yep. Um, when you were baptised in the Jordan River, what do you remember and what was in your heart? Well, I suppose you know, I can list all the different things that happened then um, and also what I felt at the time. Mm. And obviously myself and John had, John the Baptist I'm mm. now speaking of, um, had, we're friends from a young age. Mm. I, I was his cousin. Uh, he was my cousin. So um, whenever we went to Jerusalem, John didn't live very, he lived not very far from Jerusalem with his parents until he became the preacher of yeah. righteousness that he became. And um, as young boys, after, I, after my family came back from Egypt, when I was around, uh, it was in my 13th year, Okay. Uh, my family came back from Egypt. That was the first time I met John. And we became very fast friends very quickly. He, he was a, a medium of spirits. He could talk to spirits quite readily. And I was fascinated by that, mm. of course. And, uh, and so, because I could also speak with spirits quite readily as well. So, so we had many, like, engagements of conversations with spirits and, and so forth about all sorts of subjects. And, and so every time that my family went down to Jerusalem, and usually that happened once a year when we went down for the Passover celebration, and I, we would stay with John until my father got a house in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. uh, which happened a bit later in my life. And so we would get to spend a lot of this time together. Myself and John would play together, we'd do things together, we'd, you know, we'd talk a lot about, you know, truth and what's truth and we, we you know even when we were very young we'd mm. talk to spirits and find out a lot of things as a result so we had a very close relationship myself and John John through his mediumship ability received a lot of channeling from from spirits of old uh, what you would call the prophets of mm. old you know so think and in particular the spirit of Elijah Elisha was John's um, guide I suppose mm. you would call him nowadays if you were in a new age movement so so he was the spirit who, who guided a lot of John's actions and a lot of the things John said, Elisha said through him, right? And, um, and, and perhaps if I use the right name for him, Elias is what we call him, right? So, so Elias had this uh, relationship with John. He was Elias being the spirit, John being the medium on earth. Yeah. And, uh, and so he would have many conversations and discussions. Elias eventually motivated John into understanding that, that John could be the forerunner as foretold in the scriptures, in the, in, the old, old, in the prophetic books of the scriptures, to myself in the sense that he could prepare people for me to speak with them. Mm. And the way he saw doing that was to talk to them about the principles of repentance and forgiveness and to talk to them about the need for them to start to understand the need to practice the law of God, you know, to understand and practice the law of God. Now, of course, John was a bit resistive to understanding the law of God at times, and he had a very uh, strong viewpoint of the Torah. He, 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 he felt the first five books of the Bible, because they were inspired by, from Moses, mm -hmm. that they were inspired of God. And he became quite militant at mm -hmm. times about the belief in those particular books of the Bible. And I was far more liberal than he. Mm -hmm. he. He would often practice practices that I felt I didn't need to practice in mm -hmm. order to become one with God. But he felt quite strongly he wanted to practice them, so he did. So in our later life, uh, we still conversed very frequently. And we were fast friends, although we had different opinions about what it meant to be close to God. His opinion was more focused around the, what you would call the Torah and the prophets. Yeah. And my opinion was more based around my developing relationship with God and my learning truth through this different process mm. that I was discovering. But he also had spirits tell him that the process I was following, which he didn't understand at the time, was the process of, that the Messiah would engage. Mm. And in spirits with him told him eventually that I was the Messiah. So, so um, it made sense to me that the only person on the planet at that particular time, after I became at one with God, who understood anything mm. of what it meant for me to be the Messiah would be the person that I would share the experience with. Does that make sense? So at the time of my being baptised by John, I had, I had just gone through the process of becoming at one with God, a process which began in my early childhood and which was 
the actual one condition, which was me entering the eighth dimension of the mm. spirit world or the first celestial kingdom and the creation of what I call God's kingdom in heaven mm -hmm. occurred just before my baptism. Okay. And so there was a huge amount of things to celebrate for me. Yeah. Right? In fact, it was the only time I had a celebration actually in the first century was this celebration of my condition of one with God, which is a beautiful condition to be in from a personal perspective because now you have no fears, you have no trauma, there's no, like, it's very difficult to, to, to mm. describe to another person what mm. the feeling feels like without them actually feeling it. But in addition to that, I knew the truth of all of what I've been engaging all of my entire life, so it was a fulfilment of all the truth I'd discovered. And it was also a feeling of uh, I'd now opened, I knew that I'd created a new sphere in the spirit world, the, the eighth sphere of the spirit world. So I knew that, that I'd just created a new location in the, in, in the spirit world which, in which only those who had received God's love to perfection could ever exist. So nobody else was there at the time mm. and, uh, and nobody else could enter that place in the spirit world at the time. And I knew that was a, that was a major mm -hmm. event from an, from, uh, in terms of a universal event. So there were all these personal experiences that I've just had. In addition to all these universal things going on that I knew were a result of the personal experience I've just had, that I had to celebrate. Mm. And the way I celebrated it, and sometimes I regret the decision now <laughs> <laughs> because of the uh, way in which it's been interpreted, mm. but um, the way I wanted to celebrate it was I felt it to be like becoming, the, the, my description of it was being born again. Mm. And I called mm. it the new birth, experiencing mm. the new birth. It was like being born into a divine creature from being a human. So all of my life in the in the in the... Spirit, in the first century up until the age of just above 30, I was human, the same as any other human, born of, uh, of in the same manner and potentially would have died in the same manner and so forth as any other human, with, with one exception, and that was I had this desire to receive divine love into my soul and learn the truth from God, and that desire drove me until I became at one with God. Mm. And... Once I became at one with God, I knew I was immortal. So it was also this beautiful feeling that I could never die. My soul could never die. Right? So there was all these amazing events all happening at one point in time, and they'd never happened on this earth in human history. So for that reason, they were all a set of major events. Now, I decided to mark the event yeah. Yeah. with a symbolic uh, expression of the event, which was my baptism. When I, so I asked John, and he initially refused mm, mm. <laughs> and told me that I should baptise him instead. But, um, but I said, no, you don't understand. This is my celebration of, my cha of the changes and, and my knowledge of my own immortality, my knowledge of you know, that all of the things that I've been engaging up until this point were true, mm. my acknowledgement of the creation of the, eighth celestial, the, the first celestial sphere, the eighth sphere of the spirit world, my my newfound condition of now knowing that I was at one with God and feeling that condition and knowing that now God would be able to express herself through what I did, which was a joy to mm -hmm. contemplate for me. And, and so I decided to mark the event with a baptism. And John, as I said, initially refusing to do such a thing, decided to do it and I was baptised. Now, there was no dove coming out mm. of heaven and voices saying, well, that anybody else heard, let's say. Mm. I certainly heard many mm. voices um, of all of my spirit friends who acknowledged this new condition because they had yet to obtain this condition. Yes, that's right. And the very first people to obtain the condition were Elias and, and Moses in the spirit world. And that's why I engaged them in the transfiguration. Oh. Was that was, long after? It was after, around about six to eight months after oh. the, the, my, my own transition oh. well, into, was, the first yeah. dimension, into the first celestial yeah. sphere. So it was some time And that's after. why they were there, of course, at the transfiguration. Yes. Of course. Yes. So they were demonstrating to spirits mm. that this position had been achieved. Mm. And I, was, I had earlier, through my baptism, demonstrated to mortals that it had been achieved. 
but in the Transfiguration, demonstrated to John and James and Peter yes. that the that it also had been achieved then as well. And this was a way of us letting letting people on earth and in the spirit world know mm. that the condition of it one moment was a possible mm. and that God had reopened the potentiality of the soul's everlasting develop, mm. eternal development. Mm. Before then, the potentiality was closed. Mm. The, the, and that's what I meant by the death of the soul and the resurrection of the soul. Yes. The resurrection of the soul's potentialities to become at one with God mm. and therefore become immortal. Mm. And well, these things have all happened to me at the time just before my baptism. Now, of course, John didn't understand all of those things because he, he couldn't feel them all, mm. so he couldn't understand them. And it was only later uh, with the Transfiguration when Moses and Elias understood it that anyone else in the universe understood what I'd actually gone through. But it was a sort of a significant time for me. It was a personal experience. Yeah. And so I decided to mark my personal experience with a celebration. And that's all my baptism was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Um, it was always different with you, I know. But it was was the symbolic act of repentance back then. Yes, for mm. John, but not for, for, for me. John. For yeah. John's baptism, Just, yes, but yes. not for me, mm. because mm. for me there was nothing to repent. Of course, I'd gone through the position of or the condition of repentance mm. and come out the other side mm. of it into a condition of one moment with God. So my baptism didn't symbi no. symbolise repentance at all no. and God's forgiveness. It symbolised the change in condition. And John's baptism was different, obviously, to my own personal baptism. So John's baptism of a normal person mm -hmm. under those circumstances, and I say normal, that everyone's normal, it's just that I had received something that others had not mm -hmm. through my desire. But John's normal baptism was a baptism of repentance. In other words, a person acknowledging that they'd made mistakes yes. in their life yes. and desiring to repent or change yes. or, and make amends for their particular yes. mistakes they've made. But that didn't apply to myself and, no. and that wasn't the purpose of no. my baptism no. at all. And in terms of my feelings with John, I tried to describe all of these events that had occurred and while he had confirmation from Elias, the, the spirit who often he spoke with, um, that these events had occurred, he didn't really understand them. Mm. And uh, as a result, he continued mm -hmm. to preach the way he preached, mm -hmm. however with one change. And that is we decided together at, at, time, at that time or just before that time that he would go before me into different locations and, and help people come to a knowledge of repentance and forgiveness and that would help prepare them mm. for the truth, the divine truth of, of the reception of divine love that mm. I would prepare them for when I visited the same location. Mm. So we actually got together fairly frequently and planned where we would next visit and he would go ahead of me mm. and I would follow him and visit those locations after he. Mm. Even though that all occurred, he had his own followers. Um, he, yeah. he had his own followers who did not believe that I was the Messiah. Mm. And John, even though John told them that I was and, his, and assured them of his belief that I was, mm. many of his followers did not choose to follow me. Because his style was so different to yours. Very too. different, yeah. yeah. He was very, uh, shall we say, fire and brimstone yep. type of a style. <laughs> 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 he did practice love too, but yes. he he, uh, he did have a lot of condemnation of mm. the religious leaders of the day mm. and the political leaders mm. of the day, which I actually warned him against mm. uh, because uh, I said to him that this was not the way, mm. he, what he was condemning them for wasn't the truth. Mm. And I said to him that it could only end in bitterness for him. And, yeah, and it did, of it course, did. end in bitterness for yeah. him in the sense that he died prematurely, really, mm. as a result of his condemnation of, mm. of, of Herod, you know. Yeah. And, um, and in particular, not his condemnation of Herod, because Herod really didn't care or less. <laughs> Whether, whether some preacher in the wilderness preached whatever about him, Herod was still going to go down his very debauched <laughs> pathway in life. But his uh, wife mm. obviously uh, yeah. had very different opinions and was very concerned with public opinion. Mm. And as a result of that, and John's condemnation of her, yes. it led to his death. Whereas if John had been a bit more loving and focused on the truth, I doubt whether he would take, have taken such actions. Mm. Mm. But in terms of my baptism, as you, as the question you asked, that was the significance of it for me. Yeah. Um, of course, 
many things have been made of it since, mm. um, unfortunately. Like I, people now believe that, you know, baptising a child is necessary and I don't see how that mm. can ever have any efficiency in helping the person with their relationship with God. And I also, they also believe that adults, but there's arguments about how you should be baptised even, whether you should be Dunked baptised by full <laughs> immersion or sprinkled. <laughs> the reality is that I walked into the water, but John sprinkled the water on my head. Oh, okay. But there's the assumption that because I walked in the water that that meant full baptism and so mm. forth. But, but, but in the end, none of that was important to me. And the reality also is none of it is important to a Christian and their faith in God and, and their ability mm. to receive divine love. Mm. Yes, mm. yes. Excellent.